we will now embark on what is probably my least favorite uh, exercise or computation in mathematics, and I think you'll see why, uh, where we will, we will invert a 3 by 3 matrix. And, and in my mind, the only thing less pleasant than inverting a 3 by 3 matrix is inverting a 4 by 4 matrix. It very quickly becomes obvious to you that it's probably better for a computer to do this. But you need to learn how to do it, and it's, it's a good exercise for me to do. And if, if I keep doing it my whole life, it'll, it'll prevent my brain from degrading. But as you'll see, this is almost an exercise in not making careless mistakes. So let's start with a 3 by 3 matrix and try to take the inverse. So let's say I have matrix A. I think I'm going to need a lot of space here, so I'll try to do this small without being confusing. Matrix A, let's say it's 1. 0, and I'm specifically choosing this matrix because the numbers are reasonably non hairy. 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. So the first thing that I do when I take an inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix, I create what I call, or what, not what I call, what everyone calls, a matrix of minors. So let me say what that is. Let me write that down. Matrix of minors. Matrix of minors. Matrix of minors. So what's a minor? Well, what a minor is is oh, let me just, let me draw that out. So it's going to be another three by three matrix. And what it is, so this element, this top left element, is essentially going to be the determinant. If I were to take, if I were to take my original matrix and I were to cross out the top. The, the this position's row and column. So for example, if I were to cro for this 1, 1 position, row 1, column 1, I cross out row 1 and column 1. And what numbers do I have left? I have this 2, 1, 1, 1. I have this right here. So it's the determinant of 2, 1, 1, 1. And actually, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write that down. So it's the determinant of 2, 1, 1, 1. So it's, it's I'm going to run out of space, I'm sure. It's going to be 2, 1, 1, 1 the determinant, right? The absolute value sign says it's the determinant. Remember, all I did is I said, okay, in position 1, 1, let me cross out the row, sorry, the column and the row, 1, 1, and take the determinant of what's left, or the minor of this matrix, right? And then I will take the determinant. So when I go to this position, I'm in, col in row 1, column 2. So row 1, column 2. I'm essentially going to take the determinant. If I were to cross out row 1 and column 2, Cross out row 1, column 2, what I have left over. I have 0, 1, 1, 1. So it's 0, 1, 1, 1. It might be confusing, but just remember, I wish I had something I could cover this with. Uh, unfortunately, my, my fingers can't show up on this video. But if you cross this row and this column out, you're just left with this 0, this 1, this 1, and this 1. And you take the determinant of that minor. And then we keep going. I'm probably going to run out of space here, but I will try my best. And so when you go to this position, row 1, column 3, what do you do? Well, you cross out row 1, column 3, and then the determinant, or the minor, that you have to do is 0, 2, 1, 1. 0, 2, 1, 1. The determinant of 0, 2, so the determinant of that 1 by 1 matrix, 2 by 2 matrix. And then you keep doing that, so forth and so on. And I'm going to run out of space, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to calculate it. I think you understand how to do it. Well, you don't understand how to do it, but I think when we calculate it, it'll make a little more sense. So let me actually just calculate it out. Because if I were to write these 2 by 2 matrices, I would run out of space. But anyway, let's go back to this position 1, 1. Cross out the first row, first column. I want the determinant of this thing right here. So what's the determinant of this 2 by 2? That's not too hard. It's 2 times 1 minus 1 times 1. right? So what's 2 times 1 minus 1 times 1? Well, it's just 1. Then, when we go to row 1, position column 2, I want the determinant of 0, 1, 1, 1. So it's 0 times 1 minus 1 times 1. So 0 times 1 is 0, minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. Right? And that's just this determinant right here. I just, I'm just kind of re-showing you how I visualize when I cross out the rows and columns. So it's 0 times 1 minus 1 times 1. And in this position, of course, you cross out this row, this column, and it's 0 times 1 minus 1 times 2. So that's minus 2. Minus 2. 
Let's keep going. All right. So now, when we're in row two, column one, we cross out row two, cross out column one, and we're left with this zero, this one, this one, and this one. So it's zero times one, which is zero, minus one times one. So we're at minus one. Minus one. Then, when we got row two, column two, we cross those two out, and we take the matrix of the minor that's left. So it's one times one, right? Minus one times one. So that's zero. Almost, we're halfway done. OK, so then we're in row two, column three. So we cross out row two, column three, and what we have left is one times one minus one times zero. So that is just one. Last row. OK, so we're in row three, column one. So we cross out row three, column one. You have left with zero times one is zero, minus two times one. So that's minus two. Minus two. Then we're in row three, column two. So we cross out row three, column two. And you have one times one minus zero times one. So that's just one. Last one. Row three, column three. So we cross out row three. We cross out column three. And you're just left with one times two minus zero times zero. So that is two. And if I haven't made any careless mistakes, that is our matrix of minors. Or yeah, matrix of minors. That's what I would call it. Now, we now have to convert this to what we call the matrix of cofactors. And actually, this step is fairly straightforward. So to convert from a matrix of minors to a matrix of cofactors, you just have to remember this pattern. And this pattern applies to any 3 by 3 matrix. Plus, minus, plus. Minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And so you can kind of just imagine this is kind of a checkerboard of pluses and minus. And you apply that to this. So what do I mean by that? Well, that means I'm going to take, so and you start, it's this checkerboard, and you start with a plus at the top left, and then you just keep alternating plus, minus, right? So if you apply this to this, you get the matrix of, cofac the matrix of cofactors. Let me write that down. Matrix of cofactors. Matrix of cofactors. The matrix of cofactors. You can imagine this is a bit of a marathon of computation. Okay, so the matrix of cofactors is essentially applying this pattern to the matrix of minors. So what do you do? You say this plus one times one is one. But now we have a minus, right? So it's minus times minus one is positive one. Then you have plus times minus 2 is minus 2. Then you have a minus here. Minus times minus 1 is positive 1. Plus times 0 is still 0. Minus, one, minus times 1 is minus 1. Plus times minus 2, that's minus 2. Minus applied to 1 is minus 1. And then plus applied to 2 is just 2. And we have our matrix of cofactors. And we are more than halfway done with inverting this matrix. And I just want to take a note here. What we're doing, it's, you know, it's kind of just a magic formula. It, and it might seem a little bit like voodoo for you. But I just want you to keep in mind that, that in future videos, I will show you where this comes from, although it'll be quite hairy to prove it for a 3 by 3. But I'll definitely show it to you for a 2 by 2. Um, and actually, I'll show you other algorithms where that might make a little bit more intuitive sense for doing it for a 3 by 3. But I just wanted to show you how to do it this way so that at least you know, when you see it on your Algebra 2 exam, because they, I, you know, I think they actually teach this in Algebra 2, you can at least, you know, if the teacher asks you to solve for the matrix of minors or the cofactors or solve for the determinant or the inverse, you can do it. Um, and then we'll worry about getting the intuition, which is not how I normally like to teach things. But this is an exception. But anyway, back to the problem. This is the matrix of cofactors. Now, from this, we take the adjoint of matrix A, or um, as I learned from Wikipedia, the correct term is the adjugate of matrix A. But this is, it's determined, the notation is the adjugate of A. And all this is, is the transpose of the matrix of cofactors. And I know I'm throwing out a lot of weird terminology here, but the transpose. All that means is that you switch the rows and the columns. 
So this is in this one right here is in row one, column one. So now it's going to, but you know, so the rows and the columns are the same, so that just stays the same. So it actually, anything on the diagonal stays the same because this is row two, column two. This is row three, column three. So the the diagonal stay the same. And then you switch places. You kind of flip across the diagonal. And I, what do I mean by that? Well, this one, this one was in row one, column two, right? This one is in row one, column two. So it'll then be moved to row two, column one. So this one right here will go here. So you can kind of say that it flipped. It flipped over the diagonal, right? And similarly, this right here is in row one, column three. It's going to be switched to row three, column one. So it's going to go here. Right? And you can kind of see that it just flipped over that end. So this minus two isn't this one. It's this one over here. And actually, we see that this matrix is symmetric. When you flip it, you actually get the same thing. So maybe it was a bad example. But I want you, I want you to understand that the transpose is where you, if something is in row, you know, like this number, if it's in row one, column two, then it moves to row two, column one. So you're switching the rows and the columns. But anyway, we could keep doing that. But essentially, you're just flipping over the diagonal. So let's see. So then this number will be flipped to this position. So it goes there. Right? This is in row two, column one. So it will go to column two, row one, which is that. And then if we go here, that's going to be flipped down here, flipped across the diagonal. So this is minus one. This is going to be flipped all the way up there, so it's minus two. And then this will be flipped there, so it's minus one. We are almost done. So this is the adjoint of matrix A. So to get the inverse of A, and let me actually erase some of this just because we're going to run out of space otherwise. And as you can see that this is, I'm, I'll be very impressed if I have not introduced a careless mistake yet. So the, let me create, I'll erase all of this. I'm building an appetite just doing this problem. It's so taxing on me. So the inverse of matrix A, the inverse of matrix A is equal to 1 over the determinant of A times the adjugate, or the adjoint, of matrix A. Well, we solved for this part. So now let's solve for, let's solve for the determinant. So the determinant of A, and I kept the matrix of cofactors here for a reason. The determinant of A is if you go across, you could actually go across any row, but just for simplicity, just remember this way. You go across the top row, and you multiply each term times its corresponding cofactor, and you um, add them. So in this case, it'll be 1 times its corresponding cofactor, which is 1, plus 0 times its corresponding cofactor, which is 1, plus 1 times its corresponding cofactor, plus minus 2. So this is 2, no, sorry, this is 1 plus 0 minus 2. It equals minus 1. And thank god it was a relatively straightforward um, determinant. And if you didn't have this matrix of cofactors, the other way you could think about it, and this is good because it gives you an intuition of how we even got to the matrix of cofactors, you could view this as this is the same thing as 1 times its mi the determinant of its minor. So if you cross out the row and the column, it's this determinant. So it's 2, 1, 1, 1. And then remember, there was that pattern. You have plus, and then you go minus. So minus 0 times the determinant of its minor. So you cross out that row, that column. So 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then we, go, we all switch again. We go back to plus plus 1 times the determinant of its minor. So you cross out that row, that column, you 0, 2, 1, 1. 0, 2, 1, 1. And you could compute this out. And I mean, these, this, and this is this cofactor. This, with the minor sign applied, this is just the minor, right? And then when you apply the minus sign, it becomes this cofactor. 
And then this is that minor. And since it's a plus sign there, that's that cofactor. But anyway, I just wanted to explain that, and hopefully it hasn't confused you. But we're ready now to solve the inverse of a. We know that the determinant of a is equal to minus 1. We know that the adjugate of a is this number here. So we now can solve for the inverse. And let's do that. Let me erase all of this stuff. Because actually, after I solve for the inverse, I want to prove to you that it is the inverse. Maybe, if I have enough time. Because I just realized that I'm running pretty long. That might be a good exercise for you. OK. So the inverse of a, a inverse, is equal to 1 over the determinant. We figured out the determinant is negative 1 times the adjugate of a, 1, 1, minus 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 2. So this is just minus 1, right? So we just apply multi minus 1 times everything. So we get, if I haven't made any careless mistakes, minus 1, minus 1, plus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. 2, 1, minus 2. I think, I think that I have, let's see, I just did a minus times everything. That looks right. And so that is A inverse. And it only took us 17 minutes. And I will leave you there, because it would probably take me another 5 or 10 minutes just to even prove. But that might be a good exercise for you to multiply this matrix times this matrix and make sure that you get the identity matrix. I will see.